And praying. Actually, Mr. Carr, can you help us pray, please? Okay. Um, Father, we thank you, Father, for this uh, waking us up to be able to spend this time with you, Father. Uh, we thank you, Father, for this uh, special feast of Shavuot, we bring, where we bring our first fruits um, of our lives, the things that we're working on in our lives. So we thank you, Father, for Steve and Moy and the other men that will be attending. We thank you, Father, for their for their testimony. We thank you, Father, for uh, all those who are are not not here present, but will be listening later. We thank you, Father, for. Uh, our salvation. We thank you, Father, for uh, what Yeshua did for us at the cross. We thank you, Father, for um, uh, this this blessed time. We ask you, Father, just to guide us in this study, open our hearts so we can learn more about you and your and the will you have for us. We thank you, Father, for the reading. We thank you, Father, for all those uh, uh, that are here. In the name of Yeshua, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carl. So let's get started with today's class. We are reviewing uh, session number 34, the book of Nahum, uh, a very interesting book, by the way. And as uh, Carl was just praying about, today's day is Shavuot, one of the biblical feasts um, called Pentecost or Shavuot, or another name for that is Bikurim. Bikurim is the, the Hebrew name for it. Bikur is uh, the single word for uh, fruit, bikurim being the plural word for fruits. So this is when we show the fruits of his ruach. And in a day like today, like 4,000 years ago, uh, was the first time the Lord spoke with his people in Mount Sinai uh, and delivered his instructions, starting with the Ten Commandments or what we know as Ten Commandments, and the rest of the Torah. Uh, so, and in another day like today, but 2,000 years ago, about 2,000 years ago, uh, Yeshua's spirit, or what we know as Ruach, or Ruach HaKodesh, most properly, uh, happened in a day like this, that his spirit came and with his disciples, and whoever, whoever was uh, faithful to him uh, started speaking in tongues like it says there and actually we were discussing yesterday with with my girls we were discussing about what was this speaking in different languages and we came to a very interesting conclusion with the girls that there are single universal languages that you can speak everywhere no matter what uh, language do you speak and it's actually the universal language of love. And, and we think of that just for a moment. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, kindfulness. Yeah, you, you can speak that even though you don't know the language. Even if you go to Japan, to Russia, to whatever country you, you go to, you can speak that universal language, and mostly the language of love. So it's very interesting to that conclusion. It's kind of speaking different languages uh, with his Ruach, with his Ruach is the only way we can speak in different languages. So mostly those languages, the languages of love, joy, peace, kindness. Uh, I don't know the rest in English. <laughs> I memorize them in Spanish, but you know what I'm meaning. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. So we are grateful for having those both things in our lives. His Torah and his Ruach which can lead us to uh, speak and show our life uh, full of full of him, full of him and empty of ourselves. Well, let's review. Uh, well, I hope you are uh, spending a nice feast of Shavuot. And today is continues the, the, the feast of Shavuot. Today mostly is the, the time when we present the two big loaves of bread and the rest of the fruits. And uh, so it's a very interesting thing. We are not going to discuss that today. Uh, we are going to review the book of Nahum and a very interesting practical, in the practical session, a very interesting topic that can help us for today's uh, feast. So let's go for 
uh, the prophet Nahum, the prophet Nahum. Actually, I don't know, how do you pronounce this prophet in English? How, how are you used to pronounce uh, this prophet? Nahum. Nahum, Nahum, the same? I, oh, great. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I've said it, Nahum. Nahum, Nahum. Oh, Nahum. Yeah, I was thinking something like that. Uh, but the pronunciation closely in the Hebrew uh, language is Nahum, Nahum, mm -hmm. Nahum. Uh, very quick and easy prophet because it's just uh, three chapters in his prophecy. And let's try to um, set this prophet into the time. So he is one of the prophets of the Babylonian era. Actually, the maybe the first of the prophets of the Babylonian era, Nahum, spoke around 650 before Messiah. And contemporary to Habakkuk, Zephaniah, uh, before Jeremiah, Daniel, and Ezekiel. All these prophets are from the Babylonian era. And specifically, this prophet Nahum is one who spoke to Nineveh. You remember uh, the city of Nineveh? There was another prophet that spoke also to Nineveh. That was Jonah. Uh, this is the second prophet that speaks directly to Nineveh and actually to the destruction of Nineveh which represents the Gentiles. So let's see this uh, verse from Nahum. And actually, if you can open up your Bibles in Nahum chapter one, verse three. Actually, let me open up this one. Nahum one, verse three. So at least this is the complete Jewish Bible. This It says here, Adonai is slow to anger, slow to anger. We will review this uh, slow to anger uh, verses later in from the Hebrew perspective. And actually when it says here slow in anger, it actually directly translates as follows. Jehovah is with enlarged nostrils, enlarged nostrils. So you, you, you can think of your nostrils. If you enlarge your nostrils, it is associated with the uh, feeling of patience. It's not a feeling, but the, the, the consciousness of patience. Enlarge it nostrils. Because when you are patient, when you are trying to be patient, you most likely go into, the, into a deep breath, right? I want to be patient. I want to be patient. So that's that's the understanding of this uh, of this Hebrew phrase, enlarged nostrils. And actually, when you get mad, when you get angry, you also enlarge your, your nostrils. Like, yeah, and you actually in in this uh, feeling, you also enlarge your, your nostrils. So the nose is associated with. Uh, from the hero perspective, uh, with these two emotions, anger and patience. In this one, it says, Jehovah is with enlarged nostrils, so he's being patient. Translated almost always as slow in anger, slow in anger, but it's mostly uh, enlarged nostrils. The greatest and the strongest, who will not hold the guilty innocent. Jehovah walks in the world in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. That would be verse number three of Nahum. Jehovah is with enlarged nostrils, the greatest and strongest, who will, who will not hold the guilty innocent. Jehovah walks in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. So this expression is just an amazing expression about our Lord. Mm. So let's go uh, to some other understanding of the book of Nahum, just to set him up uh, in the chronology of the prophets. There are two of the so-called minor prophets that spoke exclusively to Nineveh, the capital of the Assyrian Empire. And they are kind of connected because if you remember the book of Jonah, that we reviewed a few sessions ago, it was around 770 before Messiah. 
and he communicated the message of mercy to the great city of Nineveh. Remember that actually Jonah was reluctant to go to Nineveh because he knew that the Lord was going to spare their life. And uh, actually the people in Nineveh, we see in the, in the book of Jonah, that actually started believing in the Lord. And at least they repented uh, from whatever Jonah said to them, that the Lord was going to destroy the city of Nineveh in 40 days, remember? And they actually go into, into a fast and they kind of make Teshuvah. Teshuvah, remember, uh, translated as repent. Uh, teshuvah is the understanding of having a life faithful, faithful to our Lord. They started to become faithful. They, they believed that they were going to be destroyed. Uh, so they kind of repented. But later on, 120 years later, around that time, 650 before Messiah, then comes Nahum to communicate a message to the same city, but a message of condemnation, which is the one that we are going to review uh, today. Because they kind of repented of their repentance uh, that happened with Jonah. So re they repented from their repentment. <laughs> So it's interesting. We can, and actually that's by itself, it's a very good lesson for us because we can start it on the way of the Shuvah, started following our Lord, renouncing to uh, our old ways, but we can repent of that repentance and go back to our old ways. And this is the sense of the book of Nahum. Not just because we have been called and we have been doing Teshuvah. It doesn't mean that we are going to stay there forever. We do have the option of repenting of that. But it's not a good choice. <laughs> it's not something that uh, we encourage anyone to do. There are two other prophets contemporary to this message. Uh, Sephaniah is the one we are going to review later. Uh, he also predicted the destruction of Nineveh. And Isaiah, Isaiah also predicted the fall of the Assyrians uh, in chapter 10 of uh, Isaiah. He also says about the destruction of, of Nineveh. Together, all these four prophets, they illustrate that the way Jehovah treats the nations outside of Israel, prolonging the day of grace. He just, he, our Lord is very patient. He has very enlarged nostrils. He waits a lot for anyone to repent and follow his ways. But also, we understand that uh, any kind of punishment or consequence of actions uh, for sins, mostly, is like a last resort. He, he, if he would be um, in the way we humans are, uh, we wouldn't last that long. <laughs> he doesn't wait. He's a very patient, a patient, a very patient Lord. Let's go to generalities of Nahum. The title itself, Nahum, can be translated as consolation or comfort. Nahum, that's the word Nahum. Nehemia, Nehemia is actually uh, associated with uh, the same name. Nehemia, it would be Nahum Ya, uh, consolation of the Lord. And Nahum by itself is just consolation, Nahum. He wrote the prophecy himself, and uh, he is a disciple of Joel, the other prophet Joel. So he's a disciple of him. And it is a prophecy, an inspiration from the Lord in order for someone to speak to either people, king, or uh, priests. Where is this book happening? Is happening in Judah and Nineveh, somewhere between 650 to 612 before Messiah. And why is this book helpful for us? Uh, to understand the prophecy and of judgment to the Assyrian Empire for having repented of their Teshuvah that happened with Jonah. So let's go to the chapters, three chapters. And if, actually, if you can open up your Bible, let's start reading those three uh, chapters. Uh, 
And actually, we welcome uh, the Chuck, Wolf, and Todd to the class. They just arrived. At least I'm just seeing them uh, right now. So, Mr. Steve, can you help us out with chapter number one, which is the trial? There we go. Okay. An oracle concerning Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum of Elkosh. The Lord is a jealous and avenging God. The Lord is avenging and wrathful. The Lord takes vengeance on his adversaries and keeps wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power. The Lord will by no means clear the guilty. His way is a whirlwind and a storm, and the clouds are dust to his, of his feet. He rebukes the sea and makes it dry. He dries up all the rivers. Bashan and Carmel wither. The bloom of Lebanon withers. The mountains quake before him, and the hills melt. The earth heaves before him, and the world heaves before him, the world and all who dwell in it. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can endure the heat of his anger? His wrath is poured out like fire, and the rocks are broken into pieces by him. The Lord God is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows, he knows those who take refuge in him, but with an overflowing flood, he will make a complete end to, of, of the adversaries and will pursue his enemies into darkness. What? What do you plot against the Lord? He will make it make a complete end. Trouble will not rise up a second time, for they are like entangled thorns, like drunkards as they drink. They are consumed like stubble, fully dried. From you came one who plotted evil against the Lord, a worthless counselor. Thus says the Lord, though they are at full strength and, and many, they will they will be cut down and pass away. Though I have afflicted you, I will afflict you more, no more. And now I, I break his yoke from off you, and I will burst your bonds apart. The Lord has given commandment about you. No more shall your name be perpetuated. For the house of your gods I will cut off. The carved image and the metal image I will make your grave, for you are vile. Behold upon the mountains the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace. Keep your feasts, O Judah, fulfill your vows, for never again shall worthless shall the worthless pass through you. He is utterly cut off. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Steve. And uh, Chuck, can you help us uh, to read chapter number two? And chapter number two is about the hope for Israel and Judah. Uh, I will, I don't know, Chuck, are you there? <laughs> maybe not. And well, maybe Todd can help us with uh, chapter number two. <clears throat> sure, I can. Thank you. Please. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Look on the mountains. Hang on. Let me turn on another light. One second. Okay. Look, on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, proclaiming shalom. Keep your festivals. You to fill your fulfill your vows for uh the Belia will never pass through you again. He has been completely destroyed. The destroyer has risen in front of your face. Guard your ramparts, keep watch on the road, brace yourselves, marshal all your strength. For Adonai will restore the pride of, Ye of Jacob along with the pride of Israel. Um, because plunderers have plundered them and ravaged their vines. The shields of warriors are red and soldiers are wearing scarlet. The steel of the chariots flash like fire. They are as they prepare for battle. The cypress, where the spears are poisoned, 
The chariots rush madly about in the streets, uh, joisting each other in the open places. Their appearances, their appearances like torches. They run there, they run here and there like lightning. <clears throat> the king of Neva assigns his officers. They stumble as they march. They hurry to its wall and set up shields to protect the battering rams. The gates of the rivers are opened and the palace melts away. Its mistress is stripped and carried away. Her handmaids moan. They sound like doves as they beat their breasts. Nineveh is like a pool where water ebbs away. Stop, stop, but none of it goes back. Plunder and silver, plunder the gold, plunder the silver, plunder the gold. There is no end to the treasure. <clears throat> Wait, weighted down with precious things. She is void, vacant. She is made bare. Hearts are melting. Knees are knocking. Every stomach is churning. Every face is drained of color. What has become of the lion's den? The cave where the young lions fed, where lion and lioness walked with their cubs and no one made them afraid. The lion would tear up food for his cubs and strangle prey for his lioness. He used to fill his caves with prey, his affairs with torn flesh, his lairs with torn flesh. I am against you, says Adonai. Her chariots I will send up in smoke. The sword will consume your lion cubs. I will destroy your prey from the earth. And your enemies, enemies' voices will be heard no more. Thank you. Thank you, Toth. And <laughs> let's go to chapter number three, which, spe which speaks about the destruction of Nineveh. Uh, Chuck, are you there? Can you help us out with uh, chapter number three? Yeah, sure. I had you. a little technical difficulty before. Woe to the city of blood, steeped in lies, Full of prey with no end to the plunder. The crack of the whip, the rattle of wheels, galloping horses, jolting chariots, cavalry charging, swords flashing, spears glittering, and hosts of slain, heaps of bodies. There is no end to the corpses. They stumble over their corpses. Because of the continual whoring of this whore, this alluring mistress of sorcery, who sells nations with her whoring and families with her sorcery. I am against you, says Adonai Zavaot. I will uncover your skirts on your face. I will show the nations your private parts and the kingdoms your shame. I will pelt you with disgusting filth, disgrace you and make a spectacle of you. Then all who see you will recoil from you. They will say, Nineveh is destroyed. Who will mourn for her? Where can I find people to comfort you? Are you any better than Noaman, located among the streams of the Nile, with water all around her, the flood, her wall of defense? Ethiopia and Egypt gave her boundless strength. Put and Luvim were there to help you. Still, she went captive into exile. Her infants torn to pieces at every street corner. Lots were drawn for her nobles, and all her great men were bound in chains. You too, Nineveh, will be drunk, your senses completely overcome. You too will seek a refuge from the enemy. All your fornications will be like fig trees with early ripening figs. The moment they are shaken, they fall into the mouth of the eater. Look at your troops. They behave like women. Your country's gates are wide open to your foes. Fire has consumed their bars. Draw water for the siege. Strengthen your fortifications. Go down in the clay. Tread the mortar. Take hold of the mold for bricks. There the fire will burn you up and the sword will cut you down. I will devour you like grasshoppers. Make yourselves as many as grasshoppers. Make yourselves as many as locusts. You had merchants. You had more merchants than stars in the sky. The locust shed its skin and flies away. 
Your guards are like grasshoppers. Your marshals like swarms of locusts, which settle on the walls on a cold day. But when the sun rises, they fly away. They vanish to no one knows where. Your shepherds are slumbering, king of Asher. Your leaders are asleep. Your people are scattered all over the mountains with no one to round them up. Your wound cannot be healed. Your injury is fatal. Everyone hearing the news about you claps his hands in joy over you. For who has been overwhelmed by your relentless cruelty? Or who has not been overwhelmed by your relentless cruelty? Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. So as we can see, uh, this is a very graphic, a very graphic uh, prophecy. And, and actually very short and graphic. So it just goes straight to the point uh, of the troubles of being self-confident. And this is actually a trouble for all of us because one, once we start walking the way of the Lord, uh, his path, his road, his way, we kind of gain, if we don't understand properly, we kind of gain self-confidence when we start feeling uh, healed from our old wounds, when we start feeling uh, better with ourselves, uh, th that's a tricky point because we might just fall into our own ways again, own, um, um, in, onto our old ways again. And you know what? I don't know if it's because of uh, the, w because I help, I do help uh, a lot of Bible students to to connect to the to the to the scripture, but I've seen in the last few weeks a lot of students. Well, now just a few students that have gone into that that way, and they are having such a bad time because they are just completely away. Some of them denying the Lord, some of them going through tough experiences and being angry with the Lord. Of because of these experiences that they are uh, happening in their in their lives, and some of them just simply turning into different paths and different ways, uh, mystical ways, um, happening. This is happening lately in in the last few weeks. So the, the message, at least for me, is that we should remain faithful to our Lord, faithful to His ways, no matter what. Because if not. If, and if we go back to our, our, own, our old ways and we start being so self-confident that we can do whatever we want and start taking decisions upon ourselves, not even consulting our Lord on our lives and he, what he expects from us, we can go into a bad, deep, bad way such as Nineveh. Uh, this is very graphic. This is very specific to the to the point that we can repent from making Teshuvah. So we should be aware always. Yes, Steve, you have raised your hand. Yeah, Malin, without details, you don't have to give the details. But I, I'm just trying to understand. So these are people, these are people that have have uh, again taken, um, and again, I can I can only assume. But they they were either you know of another belief of the Bible or they come to understand the Bible uh, by going back to the Hebrew writing or uh, more to a, a messianic even kind of belief I guess you could say and so they've gone through this journey of you know we'll say for example Catholic or Christian into the Hebrew root thing and they've followed along done studying with you or by themselves and they're they're coming out. Uh, this end that you're saying there and they're they're actually they're prideful and and rejecting god is that kind of what you're saying or uh, just a couple of them they actually told me you know what i'm not really sure about what we are studying and i'm sh not really sure about that the lord exists i'm not really sure about the bible being truth <laughs> so, so they are just like what are you why are you saying this to me Oh, because I, I'm actually, I don't know. I'm not sure <laughs> anymore. So what did you listen? Why did you? And actually, I'm telling you about students that were uh, at least three to four years studying as we are studying now. 
uh, and they just out of the blue they just go back to their own uh to their old lives so interesting i don't know why is that this happening and actually i understand it because it is written that even even people that are faithful will just reject the lord uh, by the end of times so maybe we are in the end of times uh, but yeah, this is kind of what is happening. Some other people wow. just started started studying differently, going into Kabbalah, into uh, Judaism, uh, and so they are rejecting uh, Yeshua as the Messiah. Uh, and actually, some of them are rejecting the whole New Testament as being uh, like a fake New Testament. So they are going through those ways. So some of them are just rejecting everything. Some of them are rejecting just Yeshua. And some of them are living just terrible, awful experiences like you cannot imagine how. And because of these experiences, uh, they are rejecting everything. They are just mad with the life itself. Hmm. Okay. So we read so we read in the Bible, again, in, in, in this prophet and, and again, the, pro the some of the prophets that we've been doing, in in a sense, it's a uh, uh, these are nations that are experience or rejecting, and 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 turning their back, or they repent and then they go back to their old ways. And 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 I guess uh, I guess the lesson that we learn today is that it's not a nation. This is a representation of individual people and uh, and and their own personal journey. That's what we should be taking away from this, in a sense. And correct. Exactly. So the, the book of, of, of uh, Nahum, so it, it is addressing directly to Gentiles, dire addressing directly to yeah. Nineveh. Uh, so Jonah spoke to those Gentiles first. These Gentiles repented, but they, that was the Assyrian Empire. So the Assyrian Empire was just very cruel to the house of the north, to, to Ephraim. Uh, and here is saying, you know what? You went back to your old ways, to your cruelty, to whatever you were doing before Jonah. So that's 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 the the trial and judgment and destruction of Nineveh. So yeah, it it can go directly. We can address it directly to that to as Nineveh, but we can also look at it as individuals because we were also in a Gentile world. We are now in the way of Teshuvah or going back to our Lord and his instruction and his way. Uh, but we we are not if we are not aware, we can just go back to our old to our old ways. So yeah, we have to be very, very careful uh, of what we listen of or who we uh, pay attention to because we can just slide off. Uh, yes, Chuck, you have raised your hand. Hey, good morning, guys. Hope everybody is having a, uh, a, a great, had a great Shabbat and, and, and is enjoying a, a beautiful Shavuot. Um, and just to chime in uh, uh, real quick and kind of put an arm around you, uh, uh, Moi, um, I seen, um, I don't know if it ended up being the entire congregation or, or not, but actually the, the the leaders of what used to be a, a large congregation of uh, um, Hebrew roots believers um, in the United States go that uh, uh, go that way. Um, we didn't hang around long enough to you know see where it ended, but um, I can I can tell you the path that uh, that they were on. Um, the original leaders. Uh, um, uh, were were um, uh, Hebrew roots believers. If it wasn't in the Bible, it wasn't in the Bible, and you know that was it. Very little tradition. Tradition was respected. Some little things were 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 adopted if you wanted to. Not a big deal. And things became uh, uh, over time more traditional. Throwing in more traditions, more traditions, more traditions. People started looking elsewhere on the internet okay it's where you find most of these things nowadays right because it was a small community and bringing more things in and more things in and more things in and then after a, a really short period of time quite frankly probably less than 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 a year all of a sudden the the, the leadership 
is talking about, you know, doubts in the Brit Hadashah, doubting um, uh, uh, Yeshua, starting to, and, you know, those things are like a cancer. They, 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 they tend to spread, um, uh, you know, and I think your original point, I never thought of it uh, that way at the time. It was really confusing for, for me as to how does this even happen, right? Um, uh, uh, but, uh, I, I think you're right about overconfidence, you know, um, as, uh, uh, I think it was in one of your studies, our overconfidence comes from, uh, 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 uh what was it that you said, you know, like, uh, a lack of self-confidence. One of the reactions is, is overconfidence, mm -hmm. right? And, and I've been there personally outside of my, my, my study of the Lord when I was, uh, when I was younger. So I'm, I'm pretty familiar with overconfidence and, and, uh, uh, you know, when, in, 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 in my personal experience, when you're walking with the Lord, you have to be re really humble and keep your ears open, um, because you do get this sense of feeling that if I jump off the ledge, he's going to catch me. Um, and, and, you know, if you jump off that ledge, it hasn't happened. Um, th uh, thank goodness he's kept me from that. But I'm just, you know, hypothesizing that, you know, if your faith really isn't strong because you put your faith in so many of these other things, right? that aren't necessarily bad. They're just not, you know, the thing. Um, uh, how could I explain it? Like, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with uh, uh, cotton sheets, but, you know, you don't want to use them for roofing material. And if you use cotton sheets for your roofing material, you definitely don't want to walk across the roof. <laughs> <laughs> so you're adding in all of these other things and getting away from, from the actual word and listening to, to the Lord himself. And you start falling into these, these modes and these repetitive tasks, you know, um, and, and, uh, uh, and traditions. And you start putting all of your faith and confidence in those things. And all of a sudden, when, you know, um, uh, those things don't work for you, I can easily see how someone's uh, mind would say, well, that's it. That's it. You know, it, 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 I can't trust in the Lord. Um, everything's a lie. Or I became overconfident and I decided to make my own decisions thinking that they were coming from the Lord without verifying with him first. And when those things don't work out, now I want to take and blame the Lord for, for those mistakes and those consequences. Um, so, you know, I, uh, just a quick comment, uh, as I said, probably a little bit longer than I thought it uh, would be. And personally for, for, for me, it's one of the, the, the reasons why, you know, uh, uh, in my house, we, we try to stay as close to the actual word as, as possible. And if we're correcting anything, it's correcting it according to the, to, to the word, not necessarily, to, to um, uh, uh, the traditions that men have handed, uh, handed down over the years because they can be deceitful at times. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck, for the commentary. And yes, actually, I, I think uh, when you were um, sharing this, I was thinking that maybe the problem is when we start listening to a human instead of listening to our Lord. Yeah. And when we start listening to another human being and his thoughts only, not being inspired by the Lord to say these things or to follow that those traditions, uh, and that's when we start not listening to our Lord, not reading actually into the scripture and just making to our own conclusions. So, and actually I love this English word because... Um, there's no direct translation into Spanish, but it in English it helps a lot. And the word is accountability. Mm. So when we are caring for each other, and actually it helps uh, today's date of, of today's feast, which is the fruit of the spirit, being love, joy, peace, patience, and all of those. Um, and if we are accountable to each other, and all of us in the understanding that we are 
uh, responsible of our existence before the Lord. So being in a small group like this is just such a blessing for all of us yeah. because we all can, are caring for each other and it's easier this way because in large congregations, when you get into the uh, anonymity, then it's easier to just slide and go in your own decisions, uh, understanding different things that you are not supposed to understand, uh, listening to the human instead of listening to the Lord. So that's why it's so important for keeping groups small and everyone in the understanding that we are responsible of our existence before the Lord. Uh, so we are accountable to each other. So yeah, that that's 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 one of the ways to uh, deal with this this kind of situations. Yes, Carl, you have raised your hand. Yeah, it's it's my own personal observation in, in my own life and 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 also in my studies, my my studies that I'm doing. It's important that we do uh, that to know that. Um, God will allow things for us to happen to test us. Um, he wants we don't we we have to not trust in our emotional feelings because there are going to be days when things are going to be raining. It's it, uh, I say that figuratively. Things are not going to be good, and we have to remain faithful to God and, and trust in Him and everything. Um, there will be days that things will be difficult. And it, it, God tells us to to not deny ourselves and take up our cross. It, the things will, will are not going to be easy. You're going to go through difficulty, and we're not to trust in our emotions, but to trust in Him. And that's something we have to do every day, every morning. We, we wake up, we begin again. We're going to fall. We're going to make mistakes, but we we need to have an intention, uh, a proactive intention of uh, trusting in Him. And not trusting our emotions because our emotions uh, can be overwhelming and give us many doubts, and then we can fall away from from walking with God. Yes, yes, completely agree, uh, Mr. Carl. Um, and that's actually one of the things why it is very important for all of us to start. Uh, I don't know how in Spanish we say uh, "cerrando filas," but we have to come uh, to each other closer and express what is happening to our lives, uh, mostly when we are in troubles, but also when we are uh, being blessed by the Lord, because we get to know each other in an intimate way. Uh, when we are flying solo, we can fly anywhere. But when we are flying together, we can just set the path uh, going back to our Lord. So that's why it's so important for us to share our lives. Because if we don't share what is happening, what is troubling us, uh, our own challenges, our own uh, tendencies, our own emotions, uh, if we are just flying solo, we can just end up anywhere. Uh, so that's why it's very important for us to uh, connect more deeper in order to be more accountable to each other. Okay, so yeah, that's very important. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Carl, for the commentary. Yes, Wolf, you have raised your hand too. Um, yeah, I mean, I can, I can see how some of that can happen, um, because depending on whatever, you know, we all come from different backgrounds and different traditions and kind of find our way to looking, well, we're looking for the truth and trying to find the truth in the word, but with our different backgrounds, we're bringing some baggage with us that we have to let go of and, uh, <clears throat> uh, we start out very enthusiastic when you learn about the Shabbat and learn about the feasts and we want to dive into that. But of course, there's all that clutter out there that you have to disregard. So the traditions of man, all the uh, the rabbinical missteps and all the, uh, the church missteps, we have to let go of all that and again, distill it on down. For me, it's kind of, you know, we're enthusiastic and we want to know and you learn something and there's so many different versions out there. Just, I mean, even just using Shavuot as an example where, you know, our, the, the local co congregation that we go to celebrated it on Wednesday, <clears throat> you know, who cares? I mean, as long as you celebrate it, if you get the day exactly right, you know, you're not going to be 
you know, critical about that kind of thing. And it's again, the community and people coming together, but, but you want to grab onto something to believe in. And all of a sudden, you know, well, you got this group saying it's this day and you got this group saying it's this day and we're using the Zadok calendar and this group is using the Hebrew calendar. And so people get distracted and pulled off and it's, I guess it's, depending on how dogmatic you become, you can kind of go off in the wrong direction. What I've kind of discovered that, <clears throat> you know, you talk about being inspired by God and hearing God's voice. God's voice is very quiet. He doesn't raise his voice. It is a bare whisper. And if you're looking at a bunch of other stuff and chasing down, you know, new beliefs and uh, new things that you've acquired, I think you miss it. I think <clears throat> there's a point there where you have to learn patience and just sit quietly and just wait. And I think that that's a point you have to come to. If you don't, then you're constantly going to be chasing the next shiny thing that pops up on your radar that you think is going to lead you to God, but it's not necessarily coming from God. It's one of more, some of the more clutter that's out there, either from the church or the, you know, the, the rabbinism, um, so just having to sit quietly, be patient and listen for God is kind of where in my experience, I've found it, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Wolf. Actually, you nailed it. <laughs> uh, it's so easy to get distracted. It's so easy for human brains to get distracted. It is hard to acquire uh, concentration and attention and 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 yeah, listen to our Lord's voice. And as you just uh, mentioned it, and actually it, it happened to Elijah, the prophet. Yeah, I think it's Elijah that he was in the cave looking for the voice of the Lord in the earthquake, in the fire, in the rain. And it came like a small whisper. Remember that passage? Yeah, the Lord actually whispers to us. He's not like a big, loud voice. Well, at least, at least not most of the times, maybe in Mount Sinai, because he was before uh, 3 million people around there. Uh, but in, in the individual form, it's kind of whispers. And it actually, well, at least my personal experiences uh, with the Lord, um, he just mentions a couple of words and that's it. <laughs> not too much. He leaves the rest for, uh, for me to think. And most most of the times he has spoken to myself, uh, it's in the it's in the form of a question. Why why are you doing this? Why are you reading that? Uh, what happened with your anger? So small, straight to the point questions in the form of the whisper. That's my personal experience, at least with the Lord. Not long arguments or. Uh, uh, confessions or instructions directly, just uh, things to keep me thinking of of his voice. So yeah, small whispers, and we have to be aware of distractions. We should learn how to be more focused, more concentrated, paying attention on what we have to pay attention to. Yes, thank you. Thank you all for your commentary. Uh, yes, Chuck, you have raised your hand again. Yes. Yeah, just a, a quick little thing that I put that I think puts uh, the conversation in context, remembering a teaching of, of uh, Joseph's that, um, you know, it's one of the reasons why we study the Bible intently is so that like a bank teller, as they're counting money, you know, they're feeling the money. They felt millions and millions and millions of bills and they don't have to look they know instantly when a false bill comes, okay, because their fingers have become so sensitive to what is real. And I think especially probably in, in Hebrew roots, because we're not a, a doctrinated concrete set of, uh, of rules, let's say like the Baptist or, or, or the Orthodox Jews, that there are so many different teachings out there um that was one of the things that that uh, uh joseph i think says in one of his first teachings um about the about the bills being able to tell the difference that made so much sense to me um and i think it's one of the dangers that we all have as we're start 
especially starting in, 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 in Hebrew roots, that there is a lot of he, so-called Hebrew re, roots teachings that include the Kabbalah, that include Judaism, that include uh, Christianity and, and all of their, you know, man-made doctrines and, and, uh, uh, and beliefs kind of filtering the, uh, the actual word of God. And why it's so important that we really, truly know um, uh, uh, the word prior to looking elsewhere for answers. Um, uh, because all the answers are, are, are in these pages. Um, you don't really have to look very far. But as people, I think we get impatient and we're in, oh, I don't know, Exodus. And, you know, we're looking at the prophet. And we read a little bit of the prophets because that seems cool. And then we're like, oh, oh, my goodness. Right. We get excited. And but we really don't know what we're reading yet. Right. We really don't know what we're reading yet. Um, uh, so it's one of the reasons why these studies are, are so important to truly understand, you know, what is real. And then once we understand that, we can look at and judge and accept or deny the other things that are out there. But if you don't know what's real first, it's a minefield. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. And yeah, I, actually, you just mentioned impatience. And our personal lives are demanding for, uh, for an answer to our emotions, to our situations, to whatever troubles we are getting into. That's what, that what, that's what brings the impatience. So we have to deliver, as we were discussing in the in the very first verse of this study, uh, enlarge the nostrils, take deep breaths, in order to become patient, to because the answers are here. We just have to keep looking, have to keep looping, and not getting distracted with anything else. So we have to develop also patience, patience. Uh, thank you, thank you, Chuck. Uh, yes, Steve. Uh, yeah, Maria, just to, again, adding to what Wolf said, too, with the, the whisper and that, too, um, and, and then what you were saying, too. So, yeah, I've had moments in my life, too, and I, I agree. It, it's never it's it's never a big, long sentence saying da 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 da, da, da. It's, it's usually, but I think, I think that's, the, you know, that's the reason that we should recognize that that is really God's voice, too, is because the intent I think sometimes in these whispers and uh, these moments is to search him out, right? Because it's just, you know, if you're following the right path, you know, that, that whisper will either bump you onto the right path or kind of lead you on the, you know, or yeah, it, it, it will, it will, it'll bump you onto the right path if you're, if you're paying attention, but it's, it's intent is to search him out. That's how I've always believed <clears throat> And again, I don't have a, you know, it's not like every month, it's not even every year, it's not even every five years, right? But when you're intently uh, searching out God and you're intently praying about things or, or uh, decisions in your life and that, um, and again, that whisper can come, but I think it's only to lead you uh, again uh, to search him out and to, 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 make, and to make sure, right? Um, uh, yeah, like it's going to use, yeah, Elijah in the cave, I think of, uh, um, um I don't know, I've lost for the word, the, the boy, but, but, uh, like the, you know, Lord, is that you? Is that you? And you go back to bed, go back to bed. And, you know, it's, it, it's, it's just, it's just, you know, we have to be paying attention. And I, and I agree with Wolf. It, it's, it's, it's a whisper. It's never, you know, we have the moments uh, when, uh, the thunder and it's judgment or it's something else, but otherwise it's just, uh, um it's just a it's just a whisper all the time so yeah i agree thank you thank you Steve. yeah i do agree too so that's why it's so important to just keep in touch keep in contact uh and mostly when taking important decisions it is also a good idea to share and maybe uh try to get another another man's point of view and actually that's why it's so important for us, us to come together more uh, because I'm pretty sure that I'm going into some kind of trouble in either my life, marriage, uh, whatever trouble I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I can rely on you, that maybe right now I'm not able myself to listen to the Lord's voice because I'm just so distracted with whatever problem I'm dealing with, but I'm relying on your capacity to listen to the Lord 
and share with me why, what he might be able to tell you or to tell me through you. So that's why it's so important to rely on each other too, because there will be sometimes that we might not be able to listen to the Lord's voice because of the things that we are dealing with. So that's why we also have to rely on others uh, that are following the Lord, that are following his path and connecting also to today's feast that are following his instruction delivered in a day like this 4,000 years ago and following his Ruach delivered in a day like this 2,000 years ago or so. So that's why we should trust in each other when we are following his instructions and being led with uh, by his Ruach, by his spirit. So that's why uh, it is very important also to rely on each other. Uh, you have raised your hand again, Mr. Steve. You want to add something else? Yeah, just just a comment, Moi, to to that is that uh, again, it's important. To, you had kind of said it earlier. You know, we're in a small group. Um, uh, you know, and there could be there could be women that listen to it uh, uh, online after, and that. But uh, in my experience, again, I've been involved in um, pretty much. You know, the the more important studies of the Bible have always been with men, and uh, and. And and I think you kind of just said something that just resonated with me that um, in a group like this, you know, we, uh, again, our perspective as men uh, outside of having our wives or other women directly involved, it, it allows us to speak more freely, whether we uh, acknowledge that or not. But but a, but it's a natural human thing that we just speak freely as men because we know it's a men's group, right? And, and I see that only because I've been in other groups and I've been with women before. So there's sometimes an inhibition, you know, for men to say things, same with women in a men's group, you know, whenever it's mixed. So, uh, so I think, yeah, you, I just wanted to agree with you and, uh, and that, uh, uh, it is true and, and that we have to realize that it, it is truly a blessing to be in a small group with just men and studying the Bible, the way we're studying it and having the conversations we have, I think, uh, um, yeah, it's just, again, agreeing with you and resonating with that whole thing. So, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Steve. And yes, maybe right now we know that this is going to be shared uh, in the universe of Internet, uh, in YouTube. But we know that we can just uh, connect to each other, uh, maybe in a more um, close way, directly to each other. Um, yeah, but yeah, we can still rely on, on each other. So let's go to the key verse to memorize of this week. One moment, there we go. So we are encouraging to read and memorize verses seven and eight from chapter one. Jehovah is good. He is a strength in the day of affliction. And he knows those who trust in him. But with a flooding cataclysm, he will make of the place of his enemies and will pursue them into the very darkness. So interesting, interesting, these verses. So he knows those who trust in him. Yeah. Let's become those that he can trust in us, uh, that we keep trusting in him. So let's discuss, actually, it's completely connected to what we are discussing uh these english terms and actually in spanish is about the same so let just remind me please the difference between hearing and listening what would be the difference between hearing and listening help me with my english here <laughs> what is hearing and what is listening what's the difference i do it can we take it it's like to hear is just here so is there a difference between hearing and listening? Yeah, I think there is. Uh, what, what would be that difference? I, I think if you're listening to, to listen is just listening to what's going on around you. To hear is to actually comprehend what's going on around you. Okay. To understand and take action. Great. So hearing is like the deeper understanding of listening, right? So Correct. listening would become just with our ears and hearing is the whole comprehension becoming into an action. Do you remember the Hebrew word for hearing or listening? Uh, 
in the Hebrew word? And yeah, Shema, Carl. Shema. Carl, just, Jesus, Shema. Yeah. <laughs> Shema, exactly. So Shema, Shema, it kind of works for both hearing and listening, but goes more for hearing, hearing. Well, let me just ask you something. With which organ of your body do you actually listen? Which part of your body helps you and actually makes you listen? Have you thought about that? Which organ of your body has the ability given by God, of course, for you to listen? Seems seems like a trick question, Moy. So I'll it just is jump always right. a trick question, my friend. Absolutely, <laughs> I absolutely. So it just seems too easy, but I'm going to play along <laughs> with you and say it's it's your ears. <laughs> it's your ears, okay? <laughs> exactly. It's always a trick question, my friend. So why am I saying this? Because most of the times, the understanding of listening, the, the actual action of listening is just related to the ears. And actually we have here a scheme of, of an ear. And actually this is a dissection. Think of uh, a cut being made uh, from the top of the head in this way, going directly just uh, a little bit in front of the ear. And just, we are seeing from the front uh, of the person, we are seeing his his or her ear. So this is the ear, the one responsible for listening. But we actually, this is not the organ of the body where what we hear with, what we listen with. Actually, if we think a little bit of why do we listen and how do we listen, it's very interesting because when there's a sound source, of any kind, think right now your earphones or my voice going all the way through this microphone, then converted into electric activity, uh, converted into bits and bytes, going all the way to the cable of internet, going all the way to wherever you are, being converted back from digital ones and zeros, coming back into electricity, going back, going down into your uh, either speaker or ear, ear, uh, headphones, then it converts into a sound wave. Whenever we listen, we are listening to sound waves. Actually, it's the compression of the air in the, in the, uh, in the environment. This compression and movement of the, of the air is what makes uh, the sound. It, actually, we think of a clap, just a clap. It just pro produced a set of sound waves and air compressions around you. And those com air compressions go into the ear, flowing all the way to this external auditive conduct and reaching this eardrum this is the eardrum then the eardrum starts vibrating with those air compressions and this vibration and this is just an amazing miracle at least for myself it, it is an amazing miracle because the sound waves convert into vibrations and then start moving this small set of bones three bones uh, at least uh and in Spanish, I know the names. I don't know if you know them in English. In Spanish is the martillo, yunque, y estribo. These three sets of very, very small, tiny bones that you have inside your ear, behind the eardrum. And this set of bones start vibrating according to the eardrum, according to the movement of the air produced by the sound uh, source. And this is when the miracle part comes. This movement starts pressing on this organ here in the ear that it's in the Latin name for it is cochlea, uh, caracol in Spanish. I don't know if in English it's like a snail. <laughs> that would be this organ. 
And actually you can see these three sets of uh, semicircles here. These three sets of semicircles are connected to this cochlea. Uh, these three sets of, uh, of uh, semicircles, they are just flooded with a, uh, with a liquid called endolympha. And you can see that there's a semicircle going straight, one going uh, like, like this, one vertical, one horizontal, and one uh, 45 degrees. This is actually the set for the equilibrium in your body. That's why you, if you start spinning around, this liquid inside those semicircles start moving. And that's when you stop, you start feeling dizzy. Is because the liquid is still moving in these semicircles, this endolympha. <clears throat> And this endolympha also goes into this cochlea and the vibration produced by this little bone here, this vibration goes all the way to the cochlea. And the very first part of this cochlea registers the sounds that are deep down, deep down tones are, let's say, listened here in this first part. And all the high pitch sounds like this, they go all the way to the cochlea, all the way to here. <laughs> they go all the way, the, the high pitch sounds uh, reach, these vibrations reach all the way to the cochlea and are registered here. Can we say that we are listening with our cochlea? What do you think? Are we already listening with the cochlea in the understanding that the deep sounds go here and the high pitch sounds go all the way here? Are we already listening here? Can you say that? What do you think? Well, the answer is no. Because those vibrations and actually all this endolympha moving, there are actually some kind of um, small cilia, small little hairs inside this, uh, uh, this cochlea. When actually, when if we look it into a microscope, uh, when we have a sound, the this cilia or little hairs inside the cochlea, they actually move. Whenever they hear or register a sound, they move. And with every movement they make, they are actually releasing, uh, uh, how do you say, atoms, molecules of sodium, potassium, calcium. They are moving <clears throat> and they are creating an electrical uh, difference, set of difference which, with each movement. And depending on uh, where this is happening, either on the deep, low tone uh, sounds or the high pitch sounds, depending on, on wherever this is happening, everything is going to be registered by this green little here uh, thing that is actually a nerve. This is a nerve and the nerve is actually uh, registering all these electrical differences of the sodium, potassium and calcium moving inside the ear. And it becomes electricity. And this electricity is registered by the nerve and the nerve brings all the way back to your brain and the, uh, having like electricity, small shocks with each sound produced. <clears throat> and then it interprets what are you listening to. So can you see all the miracle happening here? This is just, this by itself is just a miracle. Having a sound source, having all these air compressions, all these vibration and movements translated into electricity and then translated into our, our brains are translating all the time what you are listening. So this is by itself a miracle. So now again, which organ of your body is responsible for you to listen? So what would that organ be? That's a question, if you don't mind answering <laughs> to that question. The little part at the back of your brain. Exactly, the brain. The brain itself is the responsible for for understanding what you are listening to. The brain, we don't hear with the ears, we don't listen with the drum, we don't listen with any of this structure here, we listen with the brain. And why I'm going so deep into the detail of this, <clears throat> because 
we are trying to listen to God's voice. We are trying to listen for God's voice. And if we don't understand all this process, we might get lost in trying to listen to his voice. So let's make a quick exercise. If we are listening to, uh, and I will need your participation, please, if possible. Uh, let's do this small exercise of hearing or actually listening without listening. Let me get to the point. Please bring to your mind your favorite song. Can you have your favorite song right now in your brain? Can you actually listen to this song that is not playing outside of you, of you right now, that is just playing in your brain today? So which is your favorite song, by the way? Oh, my. Okay, okay, great. Uh, Steve, yes? Yeah, the uh, casting crowns, here I am, Lord. And guys, we, need, we, need, we, need, we definitely Lord. need singing lessons. Oh uh, well, you didn't say you didn't you didn't say you were going to judge us on our singing, boy. No, I'm not judging. I'm not judging. I'm just encouraging us to. I haven't yes. heard your voice yet, boy. Oh yeah, you'll hear it in a moment. Uh, yes, Carl. Uh, what about your favorite song? What? Dami Mas. Dami Mas. What can you sing a little bit for us, please? Dami Mas, a tu presencia. In mi vida, dame más. Oh, I haven't heard that one. I haven't heard that one. It's okay, a, it's a flamenco. It's flamenco alabanza. Flamenco alabanza. Never heard. Actually, oh. if you can share those songs, I'm very musical too. If you can share those songs in the back in the group, uh, so we can just get get better with the with the songs. Uh, yes, but actually, think of this process just for a moment. You thought and you bring to your mind, you brought to your mind uh, your favorite song. And it actually was playing inside your brain without listening to it. So there's a storage for all the previous sounds that you have heard. Let's go to another one. I'm thinking of my favorite song. And in a moment, I will sing it. Just let me think of it for a moment. But let me give you another exercise. Can you think of something that your mom or dad told you when you were a little kid? That they something that they teach you, something that they say to you uh, when you were very young, and that they actually get stuck in your mind? Can you think of that? And actually, I will ask you to please maybe shut your eyes to get more concentrated and actually bring that voice back into your brain. Actually listen to your mom and to your dad telling you something, whatever you want to uh, bring to your mind. Can you see that you are listening to the voice of your mom or, or, or dad right now? Is the memory, of course, but it's there inside your brain. It is right now inside your brain. So you have another voice. So we have a lot of music uh, in our brain. We have a lot of voices of mom and dad. Some of them may be functional. Some of them might be dysfunctional, but they are there. And actually, whenever and this happens for me all the time, whenever I'm ironing something, I always remember the voice of my mom. Take care, take precaution. You don't do that like that. Take care, you are going to burn yourself. I, I can hear my mom's voice every single time I iron something in uh, in the house. And so I can listen to her. What about yourself? What about all the things that you say to yourself without actually speaking? Can you identify your own voice inside your brain? when you are telling you something, and actually that, that will become a later exercise, go directly into a mirror 
and speak to yourself without speaking. Think of your own voice. And this is very important, guys. This is very important. We should be able to identify our own voice. Can you identify your own? Actually, tell something to yourself today. Oh, I just tell me what a great guy am I? I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to do. Actually, it is very important exercise. This is a very important exercise for you to identify your, your voice, your own voice without speaking. Let's go deeper. Think of your favorite verse in the Bible. Think of your favorite verse in the Bible. Can you actually listen to this verse in your mind? What would that verse be? What's your favorite verse? Do you have a favorite verse in the Bible, by the way? Anyone? No favorite verse? Do you have a favorite verse in the Bible? Do you? Can you listen to this verse in your mind? I do have a favorite verse, Moe, but it's- What would that uh, be? Well, it's just, again, and I've never, I've never memorized it because it's the, it's such a long verse, and that's not, an, it's an excuse, but it, it isn't. But Genesis, it, it, when you say that, I just remember the story, but it's the story. I guess Genesis thirty-two or thirty-three with, um, uh, with Jacob on the on the on the the shore, right? Or on he sent his family, he sent his his slaves, his families, and everything that, and that's just a very reflective verse for me. So just saying that is that's always the verse I go to, again because it's reflective of my my own life and uh, how I look at that verse of my own struggles. And again, wrestling with God and not listening to God, right? That's uh, that's that's what that verse represents to me. But I don't have it memorized in the sense. Okay, it's just, no, uh, no problem. But you know the yeah, verse. You you know exactly. You know where the context, the context, the context, and everything. The context of yeah, is great, great. What about you, Todd? My, mine is Psalm one eighteen, verse eight. Okay, and it's it, because it's better to take refuge in Adam and I than to trust in human beings. And the, and the reason that one's my favorite is because it is smack dab in the center of the Bible. It is in the very center of all the, the verses in the book, you know, in the beginning, there was God in the middle, there was God and you go to the end of revelation and what's it do. Hmm. But I like it because it's right smack in the middle. Everything okay. is surrounded by him. Or we should surround there. In, in other words, um, if we put our trust in him and everything around us falls into place. Okay. okay. We put him at thank the you. center of everything we do. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Todd. Yeah, that's why it's so important for us to maybe not memorizing the whole Bible, but at least grasping these bits and pieces of the Bible and having them inside our brains. So we can actually listen to the Bible without reading even the Bible or having an audio Bible. Uh, that's why it's so important to have those verses inside of us because we can listen to them again and again and again. That's why we encourage every uh, single session to memorize some verses, some specific verses. Okay. And now think of the voice of Jehovah, the voice of our Lord. And you think of maybe some time that maybe the Lord and you are pretty sure that it was the Lord speaking to you what was his voice like how did you perceive that and actually this is very important because the the, the importance of this uh, session is to start listening better or identifying better the voice of our Lord because of actually, we just discussed uh, previously the importance of actually listening to our Lord, maybe in those small whispers, uh, because if not, we can get distracted and we can fall off from, from his way. So it's very important for us to identify the voice of Jehovah. Very important. 
So that's why this exercise is very important. So we can just get all the clutter of sounds and, uh, and memories in our brain to actually go directly to uh, start identifying the voice of our Lord. It, it is very important. So this is, this is an exercise that we should just start like uh, disassembling all these different sounds and voices in our head to start actually listening to the voice of our Lord. So there is a lot of people, and I can tell you a like, bunch of people, that they are studying the Bible. They are maybe in a congregation. They are actually, they are doing their best uh, to do what it is written, but they don't actually have the sense of perceiving the voice of the Lord. They say, I do not listen. And the problem might become uh, because they want to listen maybe with their ears. And the voice of the Lord will not come in on, into our ears. Well, at least I, I have shared with you the, the this single time experience where I actually I kind of understood that I hear it through, through my ears, the voice of the Lord. With this one single time, uh, a lot of years ago, and it hasn't happened that way anymore. But I'm pretty sure the voice that I heard, and I now listen it from, from in, in my brain, not not audible in my ears, but inside me I can hear the, this voice. That is not my voice. It's not mom and dad dad's voice. It's not anyone's voice. It's not my spouse. This is a very specific uh, voice that I understand is the voice of the Lord. And what would be the reasons for not listening to the voice of Jehovah? Well, maybe. Uh, first reason might be that there are too many voices from others. There are too many voices from mom, dad, friends, spouse, girls, uh, uh, sons, daughters, friends. There are too many voices from other people. Nice. And we have those voices stuck in, in, our, in our brains. So that's why we don't listen to the voice of the Lord. We do have too many voices even our own voice and uh, listening to ourselves too much can actually lead us to selfishness, selfishness, pride and arrogance. That's listening to myself too much. Me, myself and I, just my voice, just paying attention to my voice. That's selfishness, selfishness, pride and arrogance. So that's why we should identify our voice so we don't pay too much attention to that voice, our own voice. We should pay attention to it, but not too much attention, at least no, not as much as attention as the voice of our Lord. That's another reason why we don't listen to the voice of the Lord. <clears throat> or another reason is that there's simply too much interior noise, too much, too much music, too much uh, noise too much in our troubles and the troubles actually kind of make a voice by by themselves and we just uh, listen to the problem over and over and over there's too much interior noise we should develop the ability to just calm down breathe in patience bring down that noise we'll discuss that in a moment there are several studies diff different way to different studies uh, scientific studies in order to understand how many thoughts do we have consciously uh, in 24 hours. So there are, there's, that's crazy, crazy numbers that go from 10 to 12 conscious uh, thoughts all the way to 20,000 thoughts in a, in a single day. The, the numbers are crazy. But there is a very interesting study that says that we have maybe around 6,000 thoughts while we are awake. 6,000. It's it's a high number, but just narrow it. Yeah, maybe we have to, that much noise in our head. Those thoughts have a voice themselves. They are not just thoughts. They are voices in our head. Think of this, think of that, go here, go there, pay attention to this, pay attention to that. Oh, we have a pending discussion. We have, uh, oh, I have to do this, I have to do that. All these kind of thoughts, they have a voice in themselves. 
And in this study, it, it was very interesting. Uh, it says that from all these six, it's possible 6,000 thoughts that we have in a day, all these 6,000 different voices that we have in a day, there will be at least one, what they call intrusive thought that will just get stuck into your brain and might be functional or dysfunctional <clears throat> uh, that you don't know where, where it came from. I don't know if maybe sometimes you say, oh, wh why am I thinking this? Wh wh what? Why am I thinking for, for an accident? Why am I thinking of a disaster? Where, where, where this thought came from? That's what they call like an intrusive thought. One thought that it's not simply not related to anything and that just goes directly into, into your mind. And this has a voice by itself. And this intrusive thought can happen one or more times a day. Maybe the same kind of thought. We have to pay attention to these kind of intrusive thoughts. And there's another reason, uh, maybe physiological reason, and actually mind, mindful uh, conditions that will not uh, uh, will actually make the voice of our Lord set apart, set set to aside. And this is just. Uh, diagnosis of OCD, you know what that is, obsessive, obsessive compulsive disorder, or AS, which is anxiety syndrome, or PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, or D, of depression. When having these conditions, and if you think of them, they are just brain conditions, it will be maybe too difficult, nearly impossible to listen to our Lord's voice uh, if we are under this, because they are just too many thoughts. Imagine an obsessive compulsive disorder or anxiety or a PTSD or depression. There are too much noise in a pathophysiological disorder, but that's a incapability of listening to our Lord's voice. So we have to deal with all of this in order to listen to our Lord. So if somebody can help me out reading Deuteronomy 27, verse 9, which speaks about the importance of being silent to listen to his voice. It's just a single verse, but it's very interesting. So Deuteronomy 27, 9. Does anyone have it? I've got it. Yes. Um. Oops, I thought I had to hold on a second. There we go. Then uh, Deuteronomy 27, 9, correct? Yep. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then Moses and the Levitical priests addressed all Israel as follows. O Israel, be quiet and listen. Today you have become the people of the Lord your God. Uh, if you don't mind reading the number 10, please. Oh, so you must obey the Lord your God by keeping all these commandments and decrees that I am giving you today. There it says, obey in your version of the Bible. It actually says, Shema. So therefore you are to listen, to hear, uh, to hear what Adonai says. So very important to be, be quiet and listen uh, in the, in the yeah. first verse, in, in verse nine. So yeah. actually it's very important for us to uh, develop this, function well, of well. being quiet being quiet and listening and being mm. quiet just not is not understood only as not speaking because i can be very silent externally but having a whole bunch of voices inside my head so i'm actually not quiet so it, we we should develop this ability to be quiet and silent inside us and actually, this will help uh, for your praying time a lot, the ability of being quiet. But sometimes we say, well, I cannot be quiet. I'm always talking and talking and talking and hearing these voices and hear my spouse and hear my mom and hear my dad. And hear, uh, well, we have to develop the ability to be quiet, to be silent. How do we do that? Well, with these kind of exercises, we start recognizing our own thoughts, and there are different voices. Let's call them voices because all these thoughts have their voices in their own. Once we start recognizing, 
we start learning how to put them aside. Let's learn how to put them aside. You, we actually, we can kind of command those voices to stop. And then maybe if you had a night with insomnia, you know what I'm talking about. There's just these thoughts all coming all over to your mind when you cannot sleep. And you just can't say to them, you know what? Set aside. Stop disturbing me. Be quiet. Stop. We have this ability to put aside those voices. Sometimes it comes like images because we think in 3D uh, with images, but those images have their, their own voice, their own sound. And develop more times of meditation. And actually meditation, not thinking in a yogi kind of meditation or some other philosophy. No, just meditate is just to think about something specifically and reflect. Actually, it helps a lot if we meditate and reflect on what we read in the Bible. What is this verse telling to me? Or what is this prophet referring to? How can I apply this to my life? That's meditating and reflecting on this, uh, what we are reading. Doing this exercise of, of meditating, not just memorizing, because there's a lot of people that the, they have this amazing ability to memorize what they read, but they don't meditate on it. And they actually do not reflect on what they are reading. So they just have all this information, but it's not processed. We should learn this ability and this will help us listen to our Lord, to be more silent, to be more quiet. And avoid the itch because it's an itch of hearing too many voices, too many outside voices. And actually we were discussing earlier, and actually that's why we love, I love these discussions that we have on, on the prophets and or whatever book we are uh, reviewing each week. Because yeah, the distractions can come. Oh, let's listen what this oh new guy on the internet is wants to share about this or that. Because now we have access, full access to lots of different voices, outside voices that can just uh, distract us and we can fall off. So that's we we should avoid the each of hearing all this or listening to these uh, outside voices. We already have too many voices. Why adding more voices into our lives? And when needed, and sometimes it's very needed, work with someone else on the thoughts you're having. Mostly on those intrusive thoughts that come once in a while uh, into your brain uh, or voices that you simply cannot shut down. And we, you can work with someone. And actually, I, I'm pretty sure that anyone here in this class can just uh, start uh, helping each other. You know what? I am having these thoughts. Can you help me out? How can I stop these voices inside me? How can I stop these, these, uh, these thoughts? Of course, prayer is needed. Um, but maybe something is, is behind those thoughts and we should discuss them. Uh, that's why the importance of healing the wounds and uh, re regulating our emotions, that's very important so we can just be more quiet, be more silent. Okay? So the voice of Jehovah. Can you help me out with John 10, verse 27, please? Hola, Anita. John 10. See, John 10, verse 27. We should have that one memorized. My sheep listen to my voice. My sheep listen to my voice. I recognize them. They follow me. Why do they, the, his sheep follow him? Because we listen to his voice. So that's, that's the importance of listening. He wants us to listen to him. How do we listen? 
Number one, in our praying time, in prayer. Remember, praying is more listening than speaking. That's why praying time is so important for us because in that specific time is the, the time we have to listen to him. So in our prayers, uh, in our praying time, more correctly, we listen to his voice. Number two, we listen to him in the scriptures. Right there in the scriptures, we have his voice, what, we, what he said. And actually today we are celebrating the time that he was in Mount Sinai and he was speaking to his people. And I am Jehovah, your Lord, that the one who took you out from the land of Egypt, that's his voice. That's his voice. He's speaking right there in the scriptures. The whole scriptures has his voice. So that's why it's so important to read, memorize, and understand, and listening to the scriptures. The faith, well, in Spanish, at least, the, 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 the verse makes sense. I don't know in English. I don't have it memorized in English. Uh, but the faith comes by listening. Well, at least that's in Spanish. Faith comes by listening, right? Fidelity will come by listening, listening to his voice. And there's another way to listen to his voice. It's to through situations that we live. In situations that we are living in our daily life, we can ask, Lord, what do you want to tell me through this situation? Let me find your voice in this situation. What do you want to tell me through this thing or this experience that I'm living? That's another way to find our Lord's voice. Of course, we previously have to get rid of all those voices be that before, or at least quieting, quieting them down. <clears throat> and there's another way that the Lord can speak to you. And at least for myself, it, it has been very helpful this way, because when we are not able to listen directly to our Lord, he will speak through someone else, through someone else, through someone that is serving you, through someone that is ministering you. This is another way that the Lord can speak to you. So that's why it's so important for us to serve to each other, to listen to each other, to share with each other. That's, that's one of the purpose actually of confessing our sins. Why we should confess our sins to each other. And he also says, pray with each other, to each other. Why? Because he wants us to connect, because he will speak to us too. And that's why also we understand that on, on the life of the apostles. Uh, they were speaking the, the voice of the Lord to other people. Um, so that's why we can be used by the Lord to speak to someone else. And mostly when having too much noise inside my, my brain or going through a difficult situation, uh, he will speak to me through someone else. So, uh, homework for the week. Be quiet. Listen to the voice of the Lord. That's it. Easy task. Easy homework for, for this week. Learn to be quiet, to be silent inside you. Of course, these exercises will help identifying those voices, but be quiet, listen, pay attention to the Lord. Okay? I don't know if you have any commentaries, any uh, questions, suggestions, contributions. They are all welcome. Yes, Doc? Hey, so one of the things you said a little while ago um, when it came to you're studying and, and and remembering what you read, right? Uh, just one of the things that helped me, and I'm just going to throw it out there, is, you know, if you give me a, a, a book and I read it from, let's say I take the Bible, for example. If I started Genesis and read all the way through Revelation, you know, historically people in, in our studies, people tend to remember the beginning of the, remember the beginning of Genesis and remember the very end of Revelation. Do you know what I mean? So you remember the beginning and the end of everything you read, but you forget all the stuff in the middle. You know what I mean? So when I do this, when I when I do my studies, I, I read a little bit at a time and I take a break and I ponder what I read because then I remember the beginning and the end 
of a lot of little sections, and that's how I that's how I grasp all the stuff in the middle. I mean, I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know if it help anybody, but you know, it's just something that, that helps me. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Excellent, excellent recommendation. Yes, because you are doing the process. That's why you grasp more of it because you are doing the process of thinking what you are reading. Yes, thank you for the, the recommendation. Yes, Steve. Um, and and just uh, again, not to again sensitivity to the whole group and that too. But is it women have more thoughts than men? I'm unable to answer that without any consequences. <laughs> <laughs> My second comment again, and and, and again, I, I understand that boy. And, and with men, and because uh, I've, I've done some reading on this too, with men, those thoughts, again, men are, are, are just um, different. Again, men have more sexual thoughts than 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 women too so the, the the thoughts of men and women are quite different uh the unfortunate thing with men is what our thoughts are sometimes that can lead us down the bad path right that's that's what uh again I just, you know just again I, I understand that you don't want to make a commentary on that but <laughs> that that's some that's some of the reading that i did on this house because I, I, I again even when i was a christian this this being silent and clearing your mind and uh, um, uh, um, trying to listen to God's voice has come up many times in in my study and in the past. It's such a hard task, right? It's such a um, at least I, I find it hard, and uh, and I think most people do is that to 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 clear your mind of all the thoughts and all the things and just you know just sit in peace and and shalom and silence and and just want to um uh to be that intimate with god is a, a tough task but uh, again just some general comments again uh understanding that but again i, I think men's thoughts you know are, are are uniquely quite different than women's thoughts maybe that's a simple thing to say yes it, it is it is different the, the the content of the the thoughts are way different uh, but they are more related to a sociocultural uh, environment uh, rather than just being men or women, uh, because there, there are some uh, some groups, let's call them groups, uh, of women that they do have a lot of sexual thoughts throughout the day. So it's not just because they are women or they are men. It's mostly because of the sociocultural environment uh, that can lead to some kind of thoughts. Uh, and there are men that simply don't have any sexual thoughts throughout the day, but it's related to the social cultural environment and the rising up and er everything uh, related to the person, not just being men or, or men or women. Uh, the thing is that those those kind of thoughts are the intrusive thoughts that we were discussing earlier. So yeah, we'll have those kind of intrusive thoughts maybe of sexual content or any other kind of content, maybe tragic, maybe uh, different. So why that's why it's so important just to, hey, why, why, did you, why did you come to my mind right now? Do you want to tell me something? Then just, if not, then just go away. Or maybe it's uh, your brain trying to tell you something. Uh, you have to pay attention to something specifically uh, maybe of your life, or maybe not. So that's why we have to discuss those intrusive thoughts uh, from time to time. Uh, and yes, most likely women do have more thoughts, but maybe men do have lots of thoughts, but we simply don't pay attention to them. But we might have the, that kind of uh, so many thoughts. Uh, but yeah, the being silent, being quiet in your brain inside you, uh, it's like a muscle you have to train it. You come to train it from time to time. There, you will come to a moment where you will have this shalom, this peace inside you because you have learned how to be quiet. Okay, it's like a muscle. Uh, yes, Todd, you have raised your hand. Yeah, hey, Steve, I, I feel you, man. Um, it, it is, it's hard to sit in peace and shalom and to just listen. With everything happening in the world and everything going on around us, it could be a, a simple, especially where you're at, you know, a simple tad thing is a, a bird makes a noise and makes a distraction. Do you know what I mean? And then you start 
thinking about, you know, like what's going on around me. I wonder what kind of bird that was. Just sort of focusing on uh, trying to hear um, what the Lord's trying to impart on you. So what I've, what's helped me anyway, is instead of just going through and doing a prayer and then trying to sit and listen and, and receive, you, you really, if, if I don't like set the atmosphere to begin with, like with some some worship music in the background, you know, instrumental only, not with you know lyrics on, just some instrumental music and just you know, relax. Let let that play for a bit. I mean, if if you don't set the atmosphere for the presence to arrive, then it it it's it's much harder, much more difficult. But I've, for me, it just works better if there is some you know light playing instrumental music, worship music in the background, you know, and just, just let that kind of play the background. And it just helps, helps the focus. And, um, you know, it just, it, it just helps me. I don't know if it helped you or not, but it's just something to try, you know. Thank you. Thank you, Todd, for the recommendation. And actually I thought about another exercise for external noises. There are two exercises. Uh, more actually, because you, you mentioned about the bird. Uh, when you are in a natural environment, when you have lots of noises, uh, let's say you have the bird, you have the dog, you have a uh, horse, you have different noises, maybe waterfall, some lots of noises. Just sit quiet with your eyes shut and start identifying specifically the source of that specific sound. You identify the bird. Then you go to a different sound, but consciously going to a different sound and hearing maybe the barking of the dog. And you pay, actually pay attention to that one. And you actually start like isolating those different noises. And that will help you to reduce the, the total noise, uh, outside noise, the environment uh, noise. And it can happen, uh, ha happen in the city too. Right now I have the bell of the church uh, next to me. I'm listening right now to the train. Uh, when you start isolating those different sounds, you can just get rid of them all. It's just an exercise. You have to practice a lot. And this can be achieved also with uh, classical music. Let's say you grab a spring from Vivaldi, remember? And when having classical music with different instruments, if you start isolating the, the sounds of a specific instruments, then you go through maybe some part of the music, then isolate a different instrument, the drums, the violins, the whatever uh, instrument there is uh, uh, and you start isolating, doing this exercise of isolating the noises or the sounds of the instruments can help you achieve, uh, just get rid of them all. So it's it's just an exercise. Of course, it takes some time and practice, uh, but you can uh, not get distracted with external noises. And that can help us also to for the internal noises that we have. Okay, so those kind of exercises can help you out. Uh, yes, Chuck, you have raised your hand. Yeah, I was going to suggest that uh, one of the things that's always um, helped me a lot is uh, uh, giving up. You know, just giving up completely um, uh, uh, in, in order to clear my mind, you know, especially when we're trying to wrestle with, you know, problems in life or or something a situation that's extremely stressful you know um it's helped me to just kind of you know throw my hands up in the air and say you know what i give up i'm not doing it um and and in that um, um how would i say uh uh renouncing um my authority over a situation it allows me to listen um, I can uh, 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 kind of recreate this with um, exercise. You know, if you've ever exercised or, or worked really hard, you know, when you're done, you know, you, you don't think about anything. You just, you know, you, you, you know, you just feel the, the, the soreness and the pain in, in your body. And that's what you're concentrating on. And your thoughts don't go to, you know, what I have to do for work or what I, it's on the grocery list or, you know, any of these other things. And uh, I think I'd mentioned in, in the past, you know, I, I normally start my days by 
by going out uh, behind the, the the tool shed. And I've got a chair out there and, it, you know, it's a ways away from the house. And I just sit there and I, uh, I listen to the birds and I listen to the, you know, the wind and I, you know, listen to the water running and, and different things like that. And it's really quiet. And that's where I spend most of my, my prayer time. And if I'm distracted with something or nervous or anxious about something, I'll, uh, um, I'll, uh, uh, try to recreate that feeling in my body when, when I'm exhausted from work by just tensing up all my muscles, I just tense up all my muscles for a while. And then I, right. Like I'm exhausted. And that's when, you know, when I've, I've gotten rid of the voices and I've gotten rid of the sounds and I've, uh, and, and I've gotten rid of that, that, that feeling of exhaustion is when that little whisper, you know, um, uh, tends to come in and I'm able to concentrate just on, on, uh, on those thoughts and just on, uh, on the Lord. Um, because if not, you know, my mind goes a, a million miles a minute. Um, ask Steve, I've got six projects all going on at the same time. You know, I, I talked to him about retirement and he just laughs. He's like, you know, no, I, I say, you know, when I retire, I'm going to open up a bakery. <laughs> That's my idea of retirement, making cakes and cookies and giving them away to the kids. Um, uh, working 12 hours a day. That's my idea of retirement. So, you know, uh, doing those exercises, getting away, um, uh, uh, feeling exhausted, just giving up on any situation and just letting the Lord, uh, 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 lead me, um, uh, you know, tends to help a lot for me. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck, for the recommendation and the, uh, yeah, the suggestions. Uh, and actually let, before I forget, uh, I promised you to sing my favorite song and actually I just thought about it. Uh, you know, this amazing song, 10,000 10, reasons. It's an amazing song. And it goes something like, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, oh, my soul. Well, that's enough of singing, as I promised. <laughs> uh, but yes. Ooh, Israel's got talent. <laughs> let's, uh, let's wrap it up and let's um, be aware of his voice through our, through our lives. He can actually also speak to us through a, a song, through a song. Uh, that's what the environment that Todd was referring to also. We have to set the environment to listen to his voice. It, no, it will not happen just like, like that in a random way. It will happen consciously when we are uh, disposed. And actually, if adding to what Chuck said, this attitude of surrendering, we should surrender to him. We are not capable we are, we are not strong enough he is the one capable he is the one strong enough uh, to help us deal with our lives so when we surrender we can also listen to his voice okay well that's it for the week my friends uh if uh todd can you help us pray please for today's week yes i can <clears throat> Father, we thank you for the opportunity you've given us to come together before you today, Father, to partake in this class. And we thank you for the message that you've, you've sent through Moy. We thank you for his life and for this class and everything he's doing to, to spread your word, Father, and to try to help those in need. We thank you, Father, because you speak to us in many different ways. And what we're asking for, Father, is that you open our minds, our hearts, and our ears so that we can hear what it is you want us to hear so that we can activate that word in our lives, Father, uh, throughout this week to this next month. And uh, so we're able to glorify you somehow, Father. We ask you, Father, to give us the ability to, to completely uh, surrender, to completely uh, humble ourselves, and to be able to sit in peace and shalom, Father, and to be able to experience hearing you. We ask you, Father, to continue to, to uh, speak to us in all the ways that you do through through music and through through Moy and through others and, and through situations, Father, because you speak to us in so many different ways. And we ask that you give us the wisdom to be able to understand what it is you're trying to, to tell us 
and to be able to activate that in our lives this week, Father. We put this week in your hands, Father, and we ask you to watch over us, send your angels around us, protect us, Father, and allow us to, uh, again, come together next week um, with, with just good things to, to say about what's happened and what you've been able to tell us, Father. We put this week in your hands, Father. We love you. We thank you. We honor you. And we glorify you only. In Yeshua's name, amen. 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 Thank you, Todd. Um, so continue to have a blessed Shavuot, blessed uh, Pentecost, and uh, hopefully you have a blessed and functional week. Shavuot for all of you. Take care. Shavuot. See you next Sunday. Bye-bye.